This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. Now, a huge move today for crude oil back above $71 a barrel. Gasoline also moving higher. Wouldn't it be nice, though, if you could put all of your concerns and worries about gasoline prices behind you? Well, that's what my next guest is trying to do. He is the CEO of Tomberlin Group, a global provider of a new class of electric-powered low-speed vehicles. And uh, before we speak with the CEO, Mike Tomlin, let's just see what his new Anvil automobile can do. Introducing the electric ride du jour. It's designed to turn the local commute into a green experience. And while it might not be a Baymobile at an asking price of $16,000, it may be a bargain. Now show us the six 12-volt batteries that are at the heart of this power plant. A good flooded lead-acid battery pack with proper care as these provide anywhere from three as many as five years. Six to seven hundred dollars for these 12-volt batteries. And how many of these you plan to make this year on the production line? Possibly we could move two to three thousand. Automakers have been lining up in Washington looking for a handout, but Tomerlin wants a dialogue. If they would work with us and allow a purpose-designed, a purpose-engineered vehicle for close-in commuting, such as this, not a golf car, to travel at 35 miles an hour and during peak commuter periods navigate on 45-mile-an-hour roads, we can take care of our oil situation just like that and won't cost Washington a dime. Why don't you show us what these uh, electric vehicles can do on the, on the public streets of New York? And being a New Yorker, I think I'm going to let you drive. Um, so, uh, airbags in the car? I don't own a car. But it doesn't mean I don't mind telling others how to drive. Slowly, 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 faster. Just try to stay in this lane. No, no, just hang on. And then just pull in front of the, uh, this car. Stay in this lane, okay? It's a stable ride, but it doesn't do anything to get rid of traffic in New York. Well, the lot is getting crowded with a lot of electric cars. There is, of course, the Tesla, the Chevy Volt, the Maya, Nissan, and Ford. They've also have plans on deck. So, Mike, what distinguishes the Anvil from a lot of these other electric automobiles? Well, you know, Pam, I think number one is availability. We're here and now. We didn't uh, get into this segment when it got real popular and sexy in the last year or so. We started engineering in 2005, doing it the hard way up in Minnesota. And uh, now we're going to market with it, and I think we've hit the market with a close-in commuter that really gets the job done. And we talk about getting the job done. What, let's say, is the maximum range of a vehicle on a full charge of, for these 12, uh, the 12 batteries, the six 12-volt batteries? That's one beauty of our vehicle, that the operator can adjust it to whether he wants a performance setting or an economy setting. I think on the low end side, you'd probably see in the neighborhood of about 30 miles, if you kept it on economy, didn't hit the boost button, didn't put it in high performance, uh, you could get upwards of 50 miles. But let's keep in mind, 15 billion miles a week are being utilized right now with people commuting less than seven miles. Okay, so but th th right now the range anywhere from 35 to let's say 50 miles on, on a full charge. Correct. And how long does it take the battery if it's completely depleted, how long does it take to charge back up? When you put it in your garage at night, just plug it in, simple 110 household current, and it will fully charge overnight. Uh, eight, hours, eight hours? Eight, eight hours. Sure. And what's the cost differential? I mean, when you take a look at what it costs to go, let's say, a mile in an internal combustion engine automobile, it's about four cents when you figure mm -hmm. in, you know, the cost of uh, the infrastructure as well as the, the engine itself. What does it cost to go a mile in, in a car like this? You know, the equivalent uh, of everything I've seen ranges from about uh, if you were comparing it to a gas miles per gallon would be uh, a structure somewhere between 200 as much as 350 miles per gallon would be an equivalent based upon what you're paying per kilowatt. The good thing is when you charge our vehicle in the evening, your kilowatt usage is at its lowest cost historically. Now, uh, when, you, when you sort of put together the program for the car, where can it drive? Does it need a special certification? Does the National Highway uh, Transportation Safety Board, have they come in and said that it can only be driven on certain types of public roads? Absolutely. It is classified as an LSV, which means that it can only operate on roads at 35 miles an hour or less. Now, that is about 68 local roads are about 68 percent of the roads in America. But I, I, uh, I, I believe that if we really want to do something significant of, about oil, that we have to take a look at a commuter vehicle classification somewhere 
between the existing classifications we have currently. And what would you want the, the government to do? Would you want the government to certify the car to be able to drive on, on certain highways or in certain lanes? What would be the, what, what kind of, what do you want from the dialogue from the government? You know, I think right now you could solve America's oil problem if you let the car go 35 miles an hour and navigate on a 45 mile an hour road. A lot of the roads are 35, but you'll have short distances of 45 mile an hour roads right. where maybe the traffic doesn't move but 20. All right, we're going to move this along because we're going to take, we're going to come right back with more of what does this mean for the streets of New York. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. My guest is Mike Tomberlin. He is the CEO of Tomberlin Group. We're talking about his electric vehicle, the new one, the Anvil. Correct. Uh, you've already outlined uh, really how the car works. What about the, uh, the response that you've had from customers? Uh, are there, let's say, overseas markets where you see interest for the, for the automobile? You know, it's getting the message out. The people who see it, who experience, sort of like what we experience traveling, uh, riding around the city of New York today, it always creates uh, quite a stir. Internationally, we're having the same thing from uh, Israel to various countries throughout Europe to Australia and so forth have expressed a significant amount of interest in it. So we're, we're pretty pleased with what's happening uh, throughout the world, quite frankly. Now, now uh, in, in be, having been in the, the automobile, uh, I can attest to the fact that a very stable ride and so on, but it is not a, an automobile. I mean, it, it does not have a lot of the luxuries, perhaps, that you would consider, or even some of the utilities. It doesn't have roll-down windows. It doesn't have an airbag. Will those things follow if it becomes more popular? Pim, you, uh, you left out that you had a heck of a chauffeur today, but... Um, I was getting to that. You're a very good driver, especially on the streets of New York. The, uh, uh, but when you look at our classification of an LSV, it is absolutely segment leading as it relates to safety. Uh, right now, it has bucket seats, dual armrest, heated seats, nice uh, stereo and CD, has operator in charge technology, flip seat in the back. So within the segment we operate, we're, we lead in that segment. We're not a Lexus. Or a Mercedes, or uh, well, the cost uh, isn't the same, right? I mean, what, what does the car cost right now? Sixteen thousand dollars, and then you got you got some great tax credits, both federally and statewide, that can knock a significant portion off of that that cost. It just uh, it qualifies for the twenty five hundred dollar uh, rebate uh, that comes out of the stimulus uh, plan for electric vehicles. Th that is correct, uh, and additionally, there's a lot of state incentives uh, as well. Uh, any other markets besides the general retail market? That you're well, looking at, well, whether it be state vehicles, or whether it be mining, whether it be hotels, resorts. I mean, I didn't mention the word golf cart for a reason, so not on the links. Where are you looking to sell it? Well, uh, uh, right now we're, we're absolutely targeting the close-in commuter uh, segment. But with that said, we do have interest uh, commercially, uh, law enforcement organizations, things of that nature. But we're a small company, certainly growing in, in this economy, which we're very pleased with. So we have to manage our growth. What about uh, the batteries themselves? I mean, that's really the power source uh, of a lot of the automobile. How long can you go with those set of batteries? When do you have to, uh, when do you have to replace them? You know, U.S. Batteries have done a great job putting single-point watering systems in there for us. Uh, those batteries are remarkably durable. Uh, last uh, anywhere three, four, five years, a lot of it based upon the maintenance and the care. But with a smart charger on board, like what we have on the Anvil, it really takes a lot of that headache away. All right. Any any uh, any plans for a uh, convertible? Are you requesting? One? I'm just asking. Any any plans for a convert? You know. You know we we are we maybe? are toying with some ideas. About okay. That. All right. Sure. We're going to have to leave it there. I want to thank you very much, Mike Tomlin, coming in, sharing uh, with us uh, your vision for electric cars, and also sharing your driving expertise for the Anvil. Thank you very much. Thank you.